to bring onto the screen uh, several of my tenants. Let's have a look. There we go. <laughs> so we have on the screen, hopefully you can see everybody. We have on the screen on the top right corner, we have, uh, can I ask each of you to unmute uh, your screen so we can hear your voices. Uh, Miss, we have Miss Walker on the top right. And uh, Miss Walker is uh, one of my tenants. Uh, she's been with me for about, uh, for about five or six years now, Miss Walker, I think. Uh, right. four, four, five. Five. <laughs> four or five years of one of my properties in Washington, DC. And then we have Miss Watson, uh, Tamika Watson. Uh, she's also one of my tenants. She's been with about three or four years, I think, uh, Miss Watson, I think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we have Miss uh, Sharika Tillery. And Sharika is one of the newer tenants of mine. She's, I think she's been with me for about a year now. So, <laughs> hi, you guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, so here you are real life Section 8 voucher holder, housing choice voucher tenants. As you can see, they do not have three heads. As you can see, they do not have five eyes. <laughs> As you can see, they just like everybody else, you know, and uh, and so on. So let's uh, let's kind of go around, Robin. And maybe we'll start off with you, Miss Walker. Uh, if you can kind of just give a, a a little snapshot of who you are, and uh, you know, and uh, and just kind of get a, a quick intro to who you are, and you know how you sort of uh, you know participate in the program and things like that. Sure. So hi, everybody. Um, I'm Miss Walker. And I guess I identify most as a mom and a grandmother. Um, I live in a multi generational home. So it's me, um, my sons, my daughter, and my five year old granddaughter. So I have uh, four grandchildren, and I have four adult uh, children. And I'm also an employee for the DC government. I work at the Department of Behavioral Health as a family engagement coordinator, and I've been in the field of behavioral health for the last 20 years. So, you know, I'm really happy to be of service to the community. Um, I used to work more on the federal level, being in Washington, DC, Congress being in our backyard, did a lot of advocacy there, but now I get to focus on the local community. So um, that's kind of who I am and what I do. And as far as you want me to go into what's next? <laughs> well, let's just go. Let's just let's let's, let's, let's make sure I introduce everybody first. So thanks a lot, Miss Walker. And we'll go back to you, Miss Walker. Don't worry. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, Miss Watson, do you want to kind of just give us the background who you are and uh, and so on? Sure. Um. Hello, everyone. My name is Tamika Watson. I am a mother of now five. Um, I recently just gave birth to my baby boy. He's now a month old. So he's a new addition. Um, just kind of speed up a little bit. Um, I have my elderly grandma I've been caring for now um, 17 years. Um, so my household is um, basically consists of my two adoptive children who are now 22. Um, my other son is 18 have a 16 year old, an eight year old, and now I have the newborn baby. My grandma is almost 80 years of age, um, more confined to a bed. So, you know, we just kind of adjusting and being of some help to help support her, you know, through her transition of, you know, her health kind of declining over the years. But um, overall, that's just kind of general, give you a general idea of who I am and what I do. <laughs> okay, uh, Sharika, Ms. Tillery, do you want to say something? Yes. Hi, I'm Sharika. I am also a mother of five. Um, I have been in D.C. now. This is the fourth year um, and the first year here with Dr. Joe, um, great landlord. Um, and um, my kids are the oldest is 21. He is actually looking at joining the Army now. Um, he just got all his paperwork turned in. Um, and then my oldest girl, she's 18. She's a senior at Roosevelt High School. Then my next one is 16. She is a sophomore at Roosevelt High School. And then my nine-year-old girl, she goes to Janie Elementary. And then my four-year-old, he's not in school yet. So he's going to be attending this year. Um, so and I'm just excited to be here and, and just to share my story with everyone else. So. Okay. Great, good. So thanks. So uh, that's uh, you know introduction to the uh, to the families that we have here, 
And as I said, uh, each of the, uh, the guests on the show are tenants of mine. And so they can sort of talk about their experiences rented from me. But I want to kind of start backwards. And uh, could we have a lot of uh, landlords listening in? And uh, so I suppose what I want to kind of uh, hit straight on, Miss Walker, uh, when people hear of the word Section 8 tenant, <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> You know, uh, what, what, what do you think the stereotype is and what's your response to that? So I think when people hear Section 8 tenant, there's a stereotype of a family who is not going to care about their property, who is not going to take care of the property. Um, maybe someone who... Um, you know, multiple children, uh, maybe lazy. And I say that from direct experience. I was talking to someone who I considered a good friend and he was complaining about someone who, um, you know, lived near him. I think it, he was in an apartment and the woman was over top of him and she had children and he just had so many complaints about this woman that to me wasn't really directed to the dwelling. And he said something about he, he he said an offensive name and said that she was on Section Eight, and I and I said, you know, in the moment, because of the stigma associated with Section Eight, I almost you know felt like I couldn't speak up. And I said, you know, the the problems you're having has nothing to do with her being on Section Eight. I, I have Section Eight. So that has, no, you know what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with her. You consider me a good friend. You, you know, you visit me at my home. So anyway, um, I think whether, I just think it's, you know, there's a lot of stigma is the point. Okay. Uh, Ms. Walker, Ms. Watson, do you want to uh, chime in? I do. Just kind of piggybacking, you know, what Ms. Walker just conveyed. Yes, it's pretty much, you know, um, it's unfair that you're being, you know, trapped in this stereotype world of, oh, when you hear voucher holder, you hear Section 8, oh, they're going to tear my home up. You know, you hear a, a, a great uh, number of complaints. Um, you know, most of the voucher holders are to be honest, are African-American. So they just think that, oh, you're just not gonna take care of their place. Your home is gonna be in deplorable conditions, which I'm a living testimony. That's not how I live. My home is beautiful, thanks to Mr. Joe. Um, I'm very, very happy with you know the area in which I reside, me and my family. Um, no violence in the community, which we know violence is everywhere, but um, I'm very, I'm very fortunate. Just say that I'm very fortunate considering the circumstances of you know where we live previously. Um, not to stereotype the community, but there was a lot of violence, a lot of, you know, drug activity and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, pretty much just kind of piggybacking off of what Ms. Walker, you know, conveyed, that is one of the bigger issues, you know, is automatic, oh, you have Section 8, or you're gonna tear my home up. That's not always the case. You know, you have some really good tenants. Um, I speak for myself and not to toot my own horn, but I take care of the environment, and, you know, if I live in quarters, I'm very, very grateful to have Mr. Joe, um, if there has been any repairs needed, never had to, you know, wait long periods of time. Communication is a great flow. Um, just the connection of having someone else, if Mr. Joe isn't available, has been a great help. Um, and so overall, you know, just those that have, have heard negative things, I think that you should just kind of open up and just kind of give it a try because it's, it's a really good program and you have some really, really good people like Miss Walker, Miss Tillery, and myself. Give us uh, a try. Uh, Sharika, do you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, I just agree with both of what the lady said. Um, like I said, I've, I've been on the program now going into my fourth year. Um, and so I guess when I got mine, it was out in West Virginia because, you know, you had to go there and live there for a year to get it because I had circumstances that came up. I had five kids and we were living in a two bedroom apartment. I lost my job. So I was like, you know, this is the best thing for right now. So I um, went out there, got it, came back here. Uh, I came to D.C. Um, and I lived three years at one house and then I've been here since. Um, and yeah, that. It's definitely a different vibe. Um, people, I don't know, people just look at you totally different. Um, and I'm from Virginia. So 
when I moved up here, uh, it was just even totally different for my kids. So, cause people will, I guess, look at you different when they find out that you have a voucher. Um, they, they, they expect you to live a certain type way. But then also, I kind of understand the, you know, homeowners too, because I've had a next door neighbor from my previous house where I lived right before here. Um, and they had, um, they had section eight as well. And I, I don't like to, you know, come down on someone, but they lived really nasty. So, and I know if I was in that position as well, I wouldn't want someone tearing up something that I invested in and put my money into. And so, and that's why it's, it's hard for me being uh, also a section eight tenant to when I go to move, they're just like, well, you know, what is it about you? That's, you're not going to tear up my house. You've got five kids, you know, what is it about your kids? And you got to go through all these extra questions and, and stuff because you're, you know, a section eight tenant that if someone was paying that regular rent, they wouldn't have to go through those same questions. So, um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to add to it. Okay, so we talked about uh, a lot of misconceptions that landlords have about Section 8. Let's kind of twist it a different way then. Your experiences with your previous landlords uh, or, or what people that you know, what, you know, what kind of landlords? I know there's some good landlords, but uh, what are the average landlords that you've experienced or you've heard about uh, in terms of the condition of their properties, the location, the areas? That uh, you know that are available to voucher holders and how they kind of uh, treat their tenants and things like that. I kind of you know you know I just like to hear your thoughts about your experiences from past landlords uh, that have uh, opened up to voucher holders. Miss Walker. So I wanted to say um, this is going back a little bit that I think that Section Eight vouchers are no different than anyone else. And so, you know, I grew up in a home that my parents owned and we had the, the, pretty much the whole block was homeowners and we had some neighbors who took care of their property and we had some neighbors who were not as clean. You know what I'm saying? So even in home ownership, you can't really determine how a person is going to live, you know, based upon that. So I, I just wanted to add that. Um, in terms of past experiences, my landlord before you, Dr. Joe, I was with that same landlord for 15 years. So up until that point, that was the length of my voucher. And um, he decided to sell. And when he decided to sell, I panicked. I remember panicking because I remember what it was like trying to find a house you know, 15 years previously, and the conditions of the homes that I was seeing that the landlords were trying to rent. And the only house I even applied for was the one that I actually got because on surface, it appeared to be structurally sound. It was definitely in a decent neighborhood. I went to high school in that neighborhood, so I knew the neighborhood really well. Um, and a lot of the other Section 8 properties were in neighborhoods that I didn't consider safe. And at that time, my sons were uh, young. My sons were teenagers or uh, middle school. And so a safe environment was really important. And I even tried to um, apply for houses that didn't advertise that they take Section 8. And even though it's illegal to not rent to a person based upon, you know, them holding a voucher, I just experienced total discrimination. If it was not a, a ad that said we take Section 8, I people told me straight up, we do not take Section 8. And I would talk to, you know, at the time, I, I you know, I, I contacted Legal A. It was just such a struggle. It's, it's, I, can't, I can't say. And I finally found my last landlord. And my experience with him was, I think I was so grateful that the property was sound, that it was clean, and that the neighborhood was good, that I didn't care about uh, the quality of the fixtures. You know what I'm saying? And once I got into the home, I realized that he had spent the least amount of money possible to pass the inspection. So there were a lot of things that came up, you know, within that first year. There were issues with the roof. There, you know, the, the floor uh, wasn't sound. So just 
he would make repairs, timely repairs. You know, I stayed there for 15 years. He would make timely repairs, but it was always like patchwork. You know, it never really fixed the problem. They always reoccurred over time. So um, anyway, I think the safety of the neighborhood, though, is the reason that I stayed. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ms. Walker, do you want to talk about, uh, you know, what's out there, uh, you know, in terms of past landlords uh, that you've rented from and, you know, good, bad and ugly? Miss what? Miss Watson? <laughs> so I was like, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, to be clear. Sorry. No problem. Um, yes, again, to add to what Miss Walker, you know, pretty much just shared, um, my experience prior to moving into um, a home, I've been a voucher holder now for about a little over 17 years. Um, my experiences have not been the best, but have not been the, you know, it has not been that bad either. Um, it just happened to be the community in the area in which I refuse to, you know, uh, raise my children in. And, you know, being a mother of uh, four, you know, my daughter is now a college grad from Georgia State. My son attend Wilson Senior High School. He's a senior. Um, I wanted to kind of get them out of the area in which we reside because of what was going on in the surroundings. Um, with the apartment that we lived in, it was just like the bare minimum. They did not um, do work unless it was maybe like a recertification or you had to kind of, you know, do a home inspection. Um, it, they'll come and do patchwork just to, you know, let things pass through. Um, just was no thought put in it. Um, they just knew that they were going to, you know, receive the money um, with you being a voucher holder is guaranteed. Um, they didn't just, you know, it was just no no thought process, you know, no concern, a care in the world about your family. You can complain about certain things that weren't right. For me, it was a little bit of a, um, a challenge with my grandma not being able to go up and down stairs where, you know, it was an issue with her mobility and they weren't trying to do anything to accommodate, which um, was very frustrating because her health had declined drastically. So I was just trying to, you know, do my very best with finding something. And, you know, of course, I was blessed to um, make contact with Mr. Joe through another um, friend of mine who her and I both worked together and lived in the community together many years ago. Um, so I could just say, you know, overall, my experiences have not been the worst, but they have not been the best. Now that I'm with Mr. Joe, I must say I'm very happy. I'm comfortable. My kids are comfortable. You know, we're not stepping over, you know, different people, as you know, that has drugs going on, alcohol in the community, you know, just a number of things. So overall, I'm, you know, I'm very happy to be in a, you know, a lot, you know, more safer environment. Okay, uh, Sharika, Ms. Tillery, do you want to add to the landlord experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly that you that you or other people that you know have had? Um, let's see, well, I've only had um, two previous landlords. Um, one was just a year for out in West Virginia, and that one's a long story. Uh, but I'll just keep on the one, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, our house was broken into twice, um, yeah. Uh, when I went to the sheriff's department, they was just like, I can't, you know, he's like, I can't tell you certain things, but he was like, all I can tell you is I've never heard anything good about your landlord. So, um, but as far as when I moved here to DC, um, I see, I didn't know that once you got a voucher, you only had six months to actually find a place. So it, it came like down to the last minute. So this one house, I just had to settle on it. Um, even though it wasn't, really what I wanted um, or, you know, what I cared for in the area. Cause yeah, I definitely go off, of, you know, the area, especially having young kids and daughters at that. Uh Oh, we lost Sharika. Oh, okay. So I think we've lost Sharika midstream. Oh yeah, you are. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I but, saw your I saw your door open in the center of the video went off. Yeah, it was my son. So I just had to I'm sorry, I had to tell him to go around. But uh, but um yeah, so I set up with that house. I moved in. Um it it wasn't a bad house, it was a row house. Um, however, it wasn't the cleanest. Um, but I'm like, you know, I know me, I know my kids, you know, we just have to make it home and you know, make it clean. 
But however, um, I didn't know that came with rodents, um, which is mice. I always call them rats. So if I say rats, forgive me, but it's mice because I just say rats. Um, but the mice, um, I'm terrified. Um, when I say terrified, they were so bad in there. Like I would hear them because it was hardwood floors and you would just like sound like they're ice skating on the floors. And I would be shaking in the bed because I'm too scared to get up and go to the bathroom. And this is like so truthful. And I used to I used to take pictures because they they were so bad. They um, bit holes up through the couches uh, and I send the pictures to the landlord, you know, and he at least he did have every month. He did have the pest control coming, but. It, it didn't work. It got, even got to the point with them when they would come. I'm like, you know what? You could just leave the tracks because I'm like, it, they're not going to stop. They're just everywhere. So, um, and at that time, I just, I kept looking for places, but it's like, it's so hard. I didn't realize how hard it was trying to find a house. Like when you get like coming from me and I didn't know anything about the voucher system. So when I moved here to DC, I see I got a five bedroom voucher. I see the five bedroom voucher pays up to like 5,400, something like that. So I'm like, okay, we'll be able to find, actually find something decent, not knowing. But literally, even though I'm told that they're, they can't tell you no, they physically can't tell you no for having a voucher, but they find other ways. So it'll be like your credit has to be like a perfect score. Unfortunately, I'm not in that bracket, but also that because my credit isn't where it is, doesn't make me a bad person. It's just that I have kids and I feel like my kids didn't ask to be here. So me as a mother, I'm supposed to make sure that they need or they have what they need to get by as far as whether it's school, clothes, whatever. So, you know, I'll mess my credit up, credit up to make sure I make sure that they succeed in life. Um, but anyways, as far as getting back to the landlord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because it's, it's, it's just so much stuff that, and I didn't know. Like I said, I've, I've been on it now for for four years, and I, it's still stuff that I'm learning all the time. But um, he he still overall was a really nice landlord. He tried to do what he could, but the house was definitely a bare minimum of just getting by. Because even you still would look at it and be like, "How did this house pass inspection?" And some way of somehow, because I'm like, I know those mice didn't show up overnight. Um, and I, I know they were there before and then other neighbors, uh, like other little kids, should I say that uh, would come down and be like, yeah, the lady that used to live here, she had mice and she had roaches and this, that, and the other, you know, that the neighborhood, they tell it. So and I'm just like, okay, but I, I've been trying to find a place and I was actually shocked and I cried the day when I found out that I got this place because it literally got to the point to where I got discouraged and I thought to where I would go looking for houses. And if the house didn't look a certain type of way, I wouldn't even apply to it. Like if it looked too nice, I would not apply. And I, I, I even told him that like, I, it's just so saddening because I'm not a bad person. I've made wrong, you know, I've made mistakes in my life. I haven't done, you know, I haven't, you know, went down the right path of righteousness, but you know, I've never been to jail. I've never done drugs, you know, I, I don't know. And it, it was just, when I seen this house, it was amazing. Amazing. Like my mom comes to visit. My sister's actually here now. She's, um, she's a nursing supervisor down in Virginia and you know, they're just so proud of me. So, um, now it's just trying to better my life to, and, and stuff like that. So and I just want to say thank you too so much. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. None, none of these uh, families have been paid. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. they're all they're all speaking from the heart and uh, and so on. So um, you know, and so on. But again, I think the families here speak for a lot of other families uh, who have the same aspirations, same goals, and same desires for themselves, for their children, and for their families. This is uh, you know, this is just how a lot of uh, folks are. I just also want to uh, address that uh, there is a misconception, though, is that uh, the Section 8 program is primarily occupied by uh, African Americans. That is not the case. Uh, you know, depending on which part of the country you're in, uh, you'll have different people from different races and so forth. It just so happened that in the Washington D.C., obviously, uh, we have a pretty large African American community, so you'll have obviously more African American participants. But if you go to another part of the country, 
uh, that would not be the case uh, and, and so forth. So I just want to uh, address that issue and take that off the table that this is not a program just for African Americans, but for uh, you know low income families, uh, you know across the board, uh, across the country, in all fifty states, and so forth. Okay, so we we, we kind of talked about uh, you know yourself. We talked about the landlords that uh, you kind of rented from in the past, and uh, and so on. So you've seen other houses, and uh, I'm just curious to know why did you rent? Why did you decide? to put an application to my house <laughs> you know what possessed you <laughs> and, uh, and so on miss walker do you want to get off first <laughs> i don't know what possessed me. what was i thinking <laughs> no i'm just kidding so oh my god like i said i could get so emotional i feel like uh, sharika right now um because of my previous experience with searching for a, a Section 8 house, when I first got my voucher, you only had three months to find a house. And then they would extend it for another three months, giving you six months total. And then they later changed that. I guess so many people could not meet that deadline because it's so hard to find a landlord to take Section 8. So uh, this time around, 15 years later, you I panicked. You would have thought I was about to be homeless. So 15 years, same house, raising my children in a decent neighborhood. And now I'm like, oh my God, where are we going to land? And uh, as soon as my landlord said he was selling and I wasn't in a position to buy, I started searching, uh, you know, and of course it's different now, you know, I'm on the phone and apps and everything and I'm searching and I'm trying to find I want it to say section eight welcomed or something because I don't want to show up at places that are just going to tell me they don't take section eight. And so, you know, putting that in the search criteria, I would find several, uh, you know, I was working during the week, but every weekend I was hitting the pavement going to look at houses and, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the house wasn't a good match. And I remember, um, you get a feel for what the landlords are like when you're when you're viewing the houses. And I remember one house in particular that I actually liked. Um, I needed it to be close to public transportation. That was one of the things that wasn't good about it. But they had this enormous deck in the back, which was great. But it the wood had all sorts of splinters and nails popping out. And so I just said, I said, you know, uh, before we move in, because I had young grandchildren, that the deck is going to need to be dealt with. You know, this is a hazard. And if in viewing the house, the landlord is pretty much looking at you like you're crazy for asking about repairs, then that's already a sign that this is not going to be a good situation. So out of all the houses I looked at, that was the only one that I really thought would work. I was going to make the sacrifice of moving into the neighborhood that wasn't as good as where I was leaving. And then I'll never forget, it was a Sunday and I was obsessing with combing through all of the listings. And I saw uh, Dr. Joe's house on Craigslist. Something said, check Craigslist, like out of the blue. And I, and I saw his house and I said, and it said section eight welcome. And it was like, you know, like almost he was saying, come, come. And I saw the pictures and I remember thinking, this is a joke. Like this is not, this, this isn't real. So I called him and he answered the phone and I visualized you as a young um, Indian. Uh, you know, from the country of India. I don't know, your accent sounded like, <laughs> like you were from India to me. And, and I, you know, I had this image of who you were and you, and you said to me, you said, um, you're gonna come, right? You're gonna come see the house. And I'm like, yes, you know, five bedroom, by the way, it's a five bedroom, four bath, beautiful, detached family home. And I was iffy about the neighborhood. I was not even looking for houses in this neighborhood. And I didn't know it was this like little section of beautiful, you know, historical um, single family homes over here. I just didn't even know this little niche of homes existed. So I came, it was after dark, it was in November and he came and showed the house. And I still was thinking, what's the catch? Like this cannot be true. So I'm gonna try to speed it up. Hardwood floors, tile, 
granite countertops, all the fixtures were the quality. And he said that. He said, you know, I, I, I would want the place to be like some place that my family could live. And that's definitely what I would say to landlords. Is this house good enough for your family to dwell in? And if not, why are you trying to rent it to someone else's family? So, you know, it was like a dream come true and I applied for it and I was the last person here and I was uh, filling out the application and he just was patient. He was still here with me. It was getting later. I'll stop there, but um, he's been, and he also advertises being the best landlord ever. And I thought it just felt so gimmicky. I was like, <laughs> Something's something's not right about this, but it's you know almost five years later, and it's all been real, and I'm very grateful. Oh wow! Thank you, Miss Walker. Uh, Tamika, what possessed you to apply for your house? Well, <laughs> Miss Walker, as you stated, I can go on and on and on. Um, I was running into brick walls. I mean, literally, just looking for homes. You know what? my expectations, just trying to find, it was just a, a number of things. I was just like, oh my gosh, I hope the area is nice. Somewhere my kids can go out and play somewhere, you know, that's conducive. You know, it was just a number of things. And I just kept running into brick walls. One of my greater challenges was um, the income, income restriction. Oh, well, you have to have three times the income. It's not realistically, you know, it's like, it just wasn't realistic for me. I've always maintained um, a great job. I'm a, a college grad, you know, my degree is criminal justice. So it was not like I'm looking for a handout. I'm just like, I need a place for me and my kids to live. And I don't just want to settle just to say I have somewhere to stay. I want to be there. I want it to be long-term. I don't want to be packing up, moving out in the next year or two. I'm looking for something long-term and you know, stability. My issue was, oh, I fill out credit, you know, credit check. They're constantly just, you know, running your credit. You're going to 15, 20 different places and they're hitting your credit and just constantly keep hitting, keep hitting. So it's bringing my score down. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I need to find somewhere to go and I need to find somewhere fast. Of course, you know, with um, being on the voucher program, it's, it's time constrained. You have to really like punch these deadlines. Hey, you only have this amount of time to look for something. This, you know, the first of the month is when they come out and do the inspections. So I just kept running into all these brick walls. I don't know what made me call Mr. J. Um, I've been trying. Let me just put that out there. I have been trying to get a home with him for well over five years. Oh, wow. Well over five years. <laughs> and for some apparent reason, I swear, it just felt like I hit the jackpot. When um, I received a, a return phone call from um, his uh, employee, uh, his colleague, who you guys probably are familiar with, um, who works in partnership with Mr. J, she called me back and she's like, Hey, Tamika, are, are you available? I'm like, um, yes. What it? She's like, I have a place. She named the area in the area in which I live. I live in Ward Five, so I'm very, 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 very happy. Um, I live actually. I'm neighbors with the mayor's mom and dad, so I live in a very, very nice community. And um, I was like, sure. I was like, can you give me like five minutes? I'll, I'll just put some clothes on. I'm just like all over the place. So I ended up coming over. I brought my family over. I brought my grandma. You know, at the time she was a little bit mobile, not as much. And um, she sat here. She says, is this our new home? And I was just like, no, but let's pray on it. But, you know, overall, it became our home. You know, we were happy. I, we share happy tears just being in a very, you know, clean environment, safe environment. Um, the home is beautiful. I mean, immaculate. You know, the home was uh, newly renovated. No one had lived in it prior to, you know, Mr. J um, doing all his repairs, a lot of add-ons. I have a five-bedroom home. Um, overall, we were just like, crying. I, I think we just started thinking, let's go to Home Goods. Let's go to TJ Maxx. Let's go to Marshalls, you know, just to decorate your home. And um, from that point, you know, we just made the best of everything. You know, I'm still here um, with many more years to come. Uh, I don't know if we may have to say, Mr. J, you have to find another property because we want to stay with you because our family's growing. But overall, we're very happy and pleased um, 
just even with the connection, you know, if anything goes wrong, I can call, I can text. Mr. J is, hey, well, what's going on? You know, I'll send someone over. So I've been very happy and very blessed more than anything, you know, considering how economy is kind of unfolding now. Um, being a voucher holder, I thank God because you're faced with homelessness. And that was one of my greater fears. I didn't want to be homeless. Um, and I could just say that, you know, a lot of people have had some negative things about the voucher program, but I think it's a great benefit, a great benefit, especially the way economy, you know, is heading. You know, we just never know what we're going to be faced with. So I'm very grateful for the program and Mr. J. I think that's all I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm stop okay. it. Okay, Miss Sharika, uh, what possessed you to uh, <laughs> to apply for my help? Um, well, I was on Zillow trying to find places, <laughs> and I seen your house, and I seen it the first time, and I just kept scrolling. So I was like, "Yeah, that's one of those houses." Yeah, say they take Section Eight, and I won't get it. <laughs> so. I just kept scrolling and then eventually it started getting down to the time again. And I'm just like, you know what? Just try it. All they can do is say no, like everyone else. All they can do is say no. So I think I, I sent a text or something. I think I text. And then at the time I said something about you guys already had enough applications on this home. So and if it opened back up, you guys would contact me and let me know. And maybe about a couple of weeks later, I get a text saying that I could um, come see the house if I wanted to and apply. And I set up, set it up, and I came here. And I remember I instantly, because I already had seen the video, and I just instantly fell in love with the house. So, But when I came here, it was already another person here. And then another one had showed up while we was here. And I was just like, I'm not going to get that house. I remember telling the kids, I was like, I want it so bad, but I, I just know we're not going to get it. So then when I get the call that I passed the first part, and um, I think the home visit was the next part, and then I passed that. And then when um, that day he was like, so you want to know if you got the house? And he was just like, you got it. And I was just, it was so exciting. Like, I, words can't even tell you how excited that I was. Like, the kids, everything, like, it was just I don't know. You've been looking for so long. You've been shot down and told no for so long to the, to the point where it had you not even looking at certain houses. And then for someone with a beautiful house like this to just come from out of nowhere and be like, you got it. It's just an amazing feeling. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, and I, I love it. And I, yes, I've been doing home goods too. I just want to. <laughs> 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 That's why you see some boxes back here because I got to go to the dump because like the trash people won't pick up these big boxes. So so because my house is not a mess because I will show a video right now. I'll go live in there. <laughs> it's just the boxes because I got to go to the dump. So <laughs> okay, I love it. Let, let's talk about the screening. The screening process, as you know, I have a very detailed screening process. I didn't just rent it to you. Uh, I think you right. probably you you uh, you may have forgotten, but it was pretty. <laughs> I have not forgot. Okay. <laughs> so what what you know, for those people who don't know, I have a very thorough screening process. I don't yeah. rent to anybody. Right. Uh, the, the kind of houses I have are quality housing, quality neighborhoods. And uh, I have no problem living in any of my homes, no problem whatsoever, because I, I, I think it was mentioned earlier on, if I don't want to live there, I shouldn't expect somebody else to live there. That's okay. just how I view things. So I only have nice houses where I would feel comfortable to live there myself. And therefore, I expect the best tenants. You know, I think I, I, I set the record straight when I meet everybody, look, I'm going to be the greatest landlord in the world that you've ever had, and I expect the greatest tenant you, you should be, okay? If that's not you, that's okay. There's plenty of other houses you can go to. But, <laughs> but I'm looking for the best tenant in the world, okay? So kind of talk about the screening process, if you remember. So kind of educate the other landlords. Uh, what did you have to go through, if you remember, before I offered you the home? Uh, Ms. Walker, do you want to go first? Well, do I, do I, let me shuffle around. Let's, let's yeah, let's shuffle. Okay. I just want to say, I remember all five of my kids get a question too. <laughs> you want. Like all five of them, from the four-year-old to the 21-year-old, we yeah. all were being questioned. So. Questions. Yes. So what they were, but Mr. J had them designed for 
each individual. Yes. <laughs> but, um, my um, experience was one, uh, of course, the credit check, just kind of kind of give her an, an, an overall of um, what are your expectations? What are you looking for? How long are you looking to rent? You know, just went through the you know list of um, questionnaires for that. Um, also, uh, Mr. J came to visit where I lived and was very impressed and pleased with the way we live in, you know, in our home. Um, we just, you know, I have an adult daughter. So, of course, you know, she went through a series of questions as well. Um, Grandma didn't quite know what was going on, but we pretty much picked up the pieces for her. Um we went through a number of things. I mean, like day to day, it was something new. And it's like, okay, I didn't went through all of this. Am I going to get this house? This is what I'm saying in my mind. I'm never sharing with Mr. J. I'm like, okay, I didn't went through 50 different things. Am I going to get this home? And um, he just kept saying, you know, what sets you apart from others? You know, like what makes you different? You know, and I'm just like, well, you know, I gave my whole spiel and everything. And he's like, you know, well, I want to say congratulations because you got the home. I felt like I just hit the lottery. I'm still broke. <laughs> At the time, I felt like I hit the lottery. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, are you serious? Like, it can't be true. Like, oh my gosh, we really got it. You know, I was just in awe. My children were happy. We were jumping around. I mean, like a kid in a candy store, we were just, you know, floored that we were able to um, move in the home. And the home is like really, really gorgeous. And um, I was just like, okay, I hope there's nothing else. But it was still more. It was more, but it wasn't extensive. <laughs> at the beginning. It was more. But, um, you know, overall, I'm, I'm never upset about, you know, the way you do your um, extensive background check because you put a lot of great work and money into your properties. It speak when people come through my home, sorry to sound as if I'm tooting my own horn, but it's always like, oh my gosh, your home is beautiful. It's gorgeous. You know, and I don't feel like, you know, not to say that it's anything negative because it's not. I don't feel like that stereotype section eight voucher holder. You know what I mean? I feel just like all the other, you know, residents and, you know, people in the community. I live in an area where it's all it's more elderly people than anything. My neighbor beside me is almost a hundred years of age. So I'm in a very, very, very calm community. Um, so I don't feel, you know, slighted or, you know, segregated, if that makes any sense, you know, from everyone else. I come in, I go, I'm not looked at as, oh, she must have a voucher. Oh, you know, she has kids. So they're going to tear the place up. I, I don't feel that, you know, because that's not how we live. I told my kids this one thing I always say, we live here. You don't ride bikes and you don't bounce balls in the home. This is where we live. So you take pride in how you look. You take pride in where you live. So, you know, with that being said, you know, the, you know, um, extensive background check is very well needed. You don't want to come in and you're looking like, okay, what did you do to my home? After you spent not only money, because money is not everything, you spent time wanting to give us the opportunity. When I say us voucher holders, because people already have it in their mind that voucher holders are going to tear your homes up. That's not the case. I've never been, you know, that person. I never will be that person. I take pride in where I live. Um, you know, I have adult children. I have, you know, two smaller kids now, one that's an infant. But, you know, um, we all take very, you know, good care of where we live. So, you know, I say that to say thank you for the extensive chat. <laughs> but, you know. Um, yeah. I, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot what I, what I tell you, Miss Walker, when I... I don't, I, I'm sure I gave you the runaround, but <laughs> yeah, it was it was a process, and I'm I'm happy to hear Tamika and Sharika's experience because now I know it wasn't just me, but this is this is this is what he does, and it was very methodical. It was very methodical, like you said. There was first coming, seeing the place. There was the application, and then I think I, it was pulled offline, and it, and anyway, it was all of you know. So finally, he called and said he wanted to do an I don't think he called it an interview but basically come to see how I was living <laughs> <laughs> so
So um, he came to our home and all of my children were there. Mm -hmm. And he spent like, I kid you guys not, like three hours. Yes. <laughs> It was like three hours. So, I mean, there was the walkthrough of the house. And I had been living there 15 years and had raised my kids there. So, like I said, um, you know, one son was like two when we moved in. And then the door, there's like 14 years difference between them. So I got all these different. I've been there a lot. And so I had this one room that had become the catch all room. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I'm going to do, have a yard sale before he comes, like, you know, the reality of it. Right. So I remember him, you know, seeing that and going, hmm, got a lot of stuff, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but overall, I always felt like my home was cozy. I, you know, I always got compliments on my home, but this was like the junk drawer that you don't want anybody to go in. And now I have to show it to my potential landlord. And I thought that that was going to kick me out of the runnings, but he sat and interviewed the family and gave us the drill, what makes us different. And I remember my son was, said that my mom deserves it. You know, if my mom has been talking about it as her dream home and, and she deserves it. And I remembered that, that struck me that, that, that how often do your children get to um, not only vouch for you, but root for you, you know? So that was, that was pretty cool. That was a good moment for me. And I don't know, I, you know, after that, he didn't say yes or no, as you all know. So he didn't say yes or no. And then the next thing was we all came to the house. We all came here together so that they could see the house. And I remember the little granddaughter, uh, she was she was really little because if she's six, almost six now, she was literally a baby. And right away, she falls on the steps and somehow she was bleeding. She hit her mouth. She did something. So, so I'm thinking blood on the carpet. This is going to ruin the whole situation. And her uncle did what he does. He just gently picked her up, you know, dealt with it. I handed him a tissue. And I felt like in that moment, he got to see the reality of how we all interact together as a family. It wasn't, you know, some wild scene or whatever. And that, that sticks out in my mind. And then when my son, you know, when everybody saw the house, they, they were all impressed and they loved it and were picking out bedrooms. And I think that's when I found out that I got the house. I don't remember as well. And um, we've been very happy here ever since. I want to say two things. One is there were two properties that were about to be built on the lot next to us. So there was, there was no, I didn't have neighbors on that side. And the neighbor who moved in uh, right next door to me, I found out that he was like the chief examiner for the city and now he's deputy mayor. So I think that speaks to the neighborhood because Dr. Joe was hyping the neighborhood and we were like, mm -mm, we know that area, it is not all that, right? <laughs> But, you know, D.C. DC is, uh, you know, I hate to say it, but with gentrification and everything that's going on, people are trying to find these single family homes. It's like a big draw. And this is the last thing I'll say. Once the pandemic hit, us being right on the park, this has become like a tourist attraction. Everybody wants to have the, the access to the park. And I'm like... Yeah, but I live right here. Yes, I live right here. You got to drive, unload the kids, pull out your camper. Guess what? That's my backyard. <laughs> so that's all I'll say. Okay. That is 7.03. Oh, oh, my goodness. I think I'm having such a good time. You know? <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have to cut this thing short because I don't want to, um, you know, I'll, we, we've kind of exceeded our time. Again, the, the whole purpose of today is several things. One is uh, to give you more perspective about the Section 8 program, but more importantly, to to humanize the Section 8 tenant. Uh, you know, what, what you see on the screen with Miss Walker, Miss Watson, and Miss Tillery are just regular folks who are looking for the same thing that you and I are looking for. They want a decent house in a decent area so their children are safe, uh, so their children can prosper, and hopefully, uh, you know, they can become better, uh, better persons themselves and be an asset to the community. There's nothing really different about what they're looking for and what I'm looking for and what you're looking for as housing providers. So 
you know, that this whole misconception about Section 8 tenant, they're going to destroy your home, you know, it's just going to be nonstop drama. As you can see today, that is not the case. You know, these families uh, are just good, great people. And I wanted this program to kind of highlight that because I think there's not, not enough landlords, there's not enough people sharing this story and, and are closing, um, you know, their properties to uh, tenants like what we have here. It's really sad because, uh, you know, these are great tenants. These are, uh, the families here are, uh, are just great people. I didn't pay anybody to say what I <laughs> what they said, <laughs> and uh, you know. So I want uh, hopefully many landlords uh, in, in watching this program will seriously consider uh, renting to Section Eight voucher holders, housing choice voucher programs. And but I and I think what you heard today, the common theme is these families do not want to live anywhere. They don't want to live in bad houses, in bad neighborhoods, and rent from bad landlords. They don't want that. So if that's your view coming in, you're not going to attract Miss Walker, Miss Watson, Miss Tillery's of this world. You're not going to attract them because they're not going to rent your house. They're, they're not. Okay. But if you go away with the mindset that you are a quality home and you're going to rent to quality families, then you're in a position to attract Miss Walker's, Miss Watson's, and Miss Tillery's as well. Okay. And and, uh, and that's how I found this program to be successful. It's uh, It's a great program, I think, for the housing providers uh you know just as miss walker and miss watson and miss tillery hit the jackpot they say when they got my house i hit the jackpot when i found miss walker miss watson and miss tillery <laughs> i hit the jackpot <laughs> I, I didn't even talk about what i hey, do you want to talk about what i do when i'm a landlord the the presents i offer you guys <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, amazing presents. Years, like you're getting birthday cards, you're getting gifts in the mail for the holidays. So that's an added bonus on top of having a beautiful home. So absolutely, I remember when the I think the first card, whatever came, and I was like, you know what? I was like, Doctor Joe is sending me stuff before my loved ones. Like this, <laughs> the first card is coming from him. The first Christmas gift yes. is coming. Flowers. Oh my God. Flowers. Mother's Day. Yeah. Mother's Day. Flowers. So, you know, and if you, have, if you have a love interest. They're like, okay, who <laughs> is this guy? What's going on with your landlord? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's all love. I'm just, you know, overall, it's just exciting. You know, you, you can't make this up. You know, it's, it's real. It's our lives and we're real, we're human, we deserve, you know, great communities like any and everyone else, you know, everyone on the screen. Well, even for Mr. J, we all share something in common and that's children. You know, we want to give them the best, you know, even with being a voucher holder, you still want the best for your babies, you know, at the end of the day, so. Yep. It's a good thing. Sharika, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Um, I don't know, I pretty much summed it up, but yeah, I, I was actually, I remember when I first got the first card too, I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, none of my kids had even told me happy birthday yet. Cause you know, they were, they were still sleeping in. So, and my birthday, I think was on a, I think it was on a Wednesday and you know, they're out of school on Wednesdays, except for the little one. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, it was amazing. And then I got a, I don't even know what they were for Christmas. It was something really nice. Oh my goodness, those pastries! Pastries, yeah. they were everything. They oh, were God. everything. I did not share. Well, I, I got, when I got to the end, uh -huh. of the tent, when I got to the end of the tin, and I thought if I don't share, you know, maybe they'll go bad because I've been eating them for a week now. <laughs> I finally told my son what was in the tin because no, I did not share. Hey, I hey, still hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The audience may not be interested in that, your pastry. <laughs> we can talk about that offline. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, um, yeah. they were, they were wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, the important thing is that if you want to keep quality tenants, you've got to take care of uh, your home and you've got to treat the families and your, you know, and your tenants as customers. And uh, because if you treat them as customers, and you treat them with respect, then they'll reward you by taking care of your home. They'll reward you by paying the rent. They'll reward you by being pleasant to deal with. 
and most importantly, they'll reward you by staying at your home for a long time. It comes a win-win scenario. Uh, it's a win for uh, Miss Walker, Miss Watson, Miss Tillery, and it's also a win for me. And uh, and that's how it should be. So with that said and done, um, it is now seven oh nine. I'm sorry, Nikki. Uh, I don't think we got time for Q and A, but uh, so we're going to have to wrap it up, guys. So next, so hopefully this is the informative uh program today and uh again i want to thank uh, miss walker miss watson miss tillery for taking time to to share your experiences with the audience and um, hopefully a lot of people have been educated about uh, section 8 tenants the section 8 program and hopefully this will be uh you know uh, an opportunity to really seriously consider being a housing pride provided for the program so with that said and done guys Thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll speak to you guys next week. On uh, we're going to have a different topic on the uh, you know the Section Eight playbook. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye, you guys.